Understanding how to create and edit curves in Maya can open up a lot of opportunities for modeling and animation. Let's have a look at the main tools to create some curves that we can use for things like sweep mesh. For our basic curve tools, we can find them all in create curve tools. We can even undock this panel here by clicking this little dash line at the top. Other little menus you might wanna be aware of when you're creating curves is on our shelf, we have a curves and services tab, which just has some basics of the editing and creation. And there's also this curves menu right at the top, which has pretty much all our editing curve tools. Let's now have a look at actually creating some of these curves. So we're gonna start with, from the top, the CV curve tool. We can click to create the points. And the way this one works is it requires four points with the default settings before you actually start to see the curve. So you can see as soon as I put my fourth point here, it creates a curve and then every additional point afterwards continues that curve on. You kind of notice that it's the points sit offset to the curve. So this is, makes it really easy to make some really smooth sort of turns as well. Now, something we have to be very aware of when creating curves is by default, they're gonna be placed on the ground plane if we're in perspective mode. So as you can see, it sits flush with that zero Y value. So it's essentially a 2D object at this point. If we switch cameras to something like our front view, you'll see now the curve gets drawn on the front facing plane. So it's actually on that X, Y plane and it's still a 2D shape, but now it's kind of facing upwards instead. Now you can imagine this can be quite annoying if we wanna actually put our curve in the 3D space, we're gonna to have to edit it afterwards. So what we can use is our snapping tools, the first of which is our live surface tool. So if I create an object here and I head up to my snapping tool area, I can click this little magnet and make our cube live. Now when I go back to my CV curve tool, I actually just get to create the curve straight onto the surface of the cube, which essentially makes it into the 3D space instead. Now you can imagine you can do this with a more complex object. So I'll just show you really quick here. We can create a sphere and do the exact same thing. So having the sphere be a live surface means we're actually creating these curves on all three axes instead of just two and keeping them flat. Next up, let's have a look at our EP curve tool. So this is the second one here. This one's really simple to use and it's great for just making really quick curves. So you see, as soon as I put my first point and the second point, I've already got a curve. So you can still make some nice turns, but I find it's a little harder to make very smooth curves as opposed to the CV tool. One of the best uses for the EP curve tool is to change its settings to linear. This is great for snapping around corners or any sort of straight lines. We can access the settings by just hitting this little box in the menu here. In these settings, you'll see some curve degree options. So we're gonna change this to one linear. What you should see now when you start to draw your curve is there's no curving happening anymore, right? Every single point is just a linear line from the last point and you can create these really hard edged shapes. If you ever wanna revert this back to its original, you're just gonna to have to open the settings and change it back to the three cubic option instead. All these curve tools have options, so you may wanna explore them yourself. Just additionally, one really great use for the linear EP curve tool is to utilize it with snapping to points. So if we have this cube here and I hold down V, which is snap to point, we can see I can just click all my points on the corners and now I have a curve that is a square shape that also lines up perfectly with my object here. This is obviously great for running objects around sharp corners or rounding out corners. I've used this method to create skirting boards and cornices for a room um, and it's very effective. One thing we should look at now is once we have a curve, so we'll just create one here with a CV, we can edit it by holding right click over it and clicking control vertex. This gives us access to the vertices that actually control the shape of our curve. So you can just select these little pink dots and you can move them around with your move tool. You can even see here, you can introduce that third axis to any sort of flat curve. And this is obviously a great way to make some more interesting shapes here. Next up, let's have a look at the Bezier curve tool. This one, you'll definitely wanna have the options open most of the time with the little tool settings here, just because it's got some great little shortcuts there for you to have a look at, as well as some options to change. This one is one you'll probably wanna just try out yourself and get used to experimenting with all the options. But what it's really great for is having curves into straight edges or sharp corners into curves again. As you can imagine, this works really well for something like our sweep mesh curve profile. So actually using the curve shape 
to sweep the mesh. So you can make some really fancy sort of photo frames and things like that. As I mentioned, definitely need to experiment with this one yourself to kind of really master it. You can edit the little beziers as long as you're in this tool, you can select them. There's even a lot of little shortcuts with hold, shift and right click for those context sensitive menus. Next up, a quick one here is the pencil curve tool. This one's really, really rough. It essentially is just gonna draw a curve how you draw your mouse. So you can imagine you could use a tablet or something like this to create some handwriting might be useful. It's not one I use too often. You can see it creates a lot of points, so it can be very hard to make some you know, smooth, useful curves with this one. Gonna go quickly over these last two as well, because they're not ones that I use too often. I don't find them that useful, but we've got our circular arc tools. So there's a three point and a two point, and they work pretty easily. So you just kind of click the points onto your screen um, in the place you want them. You can of course use this with your snapping or your live surfaces to place them better in the world, but they can kind of create these nice, you know, half circles and different kind of curves here. So you might find a use for them. There's one more method of creating curves that I use quite a bit, and that is converting polygon edges to a curve. This is great for aligning curves along surfaces, especially if they're rounded. So what you wanna do is select in just your regular component mode or edge mode here, the edges that you would like to convert into a curve as you can see here, I'm just kind of grabbing this half circle that runs on the top of this sphere. Once you've got this selection, you want to head up to the modify menu and then head to convert and in convert, you'll find polygon edges to curve. So just click that one. Once you've done that, you should now see where you had your selection a curve that you can work with. So you can imagine you could sweep mesh this, do whatever you want, and you now got topology that runs along the surface of an object, which is very, very powerful. The main ways I'm using this is to put detail into any sort of curved surface a lot of the time, or another really great one is any sort of rubber seal that you need to make, you know, a connection between two objects. It's very easy to just grab those edges that are, you know, at the connection point convert them into a curve and then sweep mesh. And now you've got an object that fits exactly where you want it to be. Just to finish off, we'll just go over a few little extra tools to help edit the curves. There's definitely more than this, but these are probably the most useful ones where we can extend a curve easily. We can close off the end back to the start, or we can also add a point in the middle of the curve to add more detail. Starting off with the add points tool, which you can find in our curves menu here. This will just let us extend the curve. So you can see I can just keep clicking and it extends it. You see it kind of extends it with the EP curve format. So I'm not really creating what the CV curve was before, but I can still make edits afterwards. So it's a great way to extend your curves. Next up in the same menu, we have open close, which we can see here literally just closes off the curve. So if you need this to be a fully enclosed loop, this is a great way to do it. Obviously make sure you have your curve selected when you do this. Finally, let's look at adding an extra point to our curve so we can make it more complex. You wanna hold right click over the curve and go to curve point. When you're in curve point, you wanna click where you want the extra point, head up to the curve menu, and then look for insert knot. What this will do is just create an extra curve point there for you to move around or our control vertice, what we looked at before. And now we have more control of you know, changing the shape of the curve. That basically does it for the most useful curve tools. You can really do a lot of these for your modeling and animation. If you want to have a look on my channel for the sweep mesh video, um, this will kind of give you some tips about what you can do with your curves.